Hello my schoolers, you are welcome to my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we shall be covering electric feed one. So this topic, we have divided it into two. So in today's video, we are going to be dealing with the part one of it, while in the next video, we deal with the part two of it. So relax, do not go anywhere, I will be right back. You are welcome back to my school YouTube channel. Like I said earlier on, in today's video, we are going to be dealing with the part one of electric feed. So before we begin with our lesson, let's quickly run through the objective for today's video lesson. So objective number one, at the end of this video, we should be able to define electric feed, distinguish between conductors and insulators, charge a body by friction, induction, and contact, identify bodies charged either similarly or oppositely, then construct simple electroscope, show how an electroscope can be used to detect the presence and magnitude of electric charges, and lastly, explain the action of lightning conductor. So let's begin with our lesson properly. So in the first slide, we are going to be defining what an electric feed is, okay? So an electric feed is a region or space where a charged body experiences an electric force. Now, electric feed is a vector, okay? It's a vector quantity, meaning that it has both magnitude and direction. So the direction of an electric feed at any point is given by the direction of the force acting on a small positive charge placed at that point, okay? So electric feed is represented by electric lines of force. So let's talk about the types of electric feed. So basically, there are two types of electric feeds, namely uniform feed and variable feed. So what is a uniform feed? So a uniform feed is one in which the feed lines are straight, parallel, and evenly spaced, as you can see in the diagram below. So these are lines of force in a uniform feed. So they are straight, they are parallel, and evenly spaced. So let's move to the next slide. So the second type of feed that we have is the variable feed, okay? So the variable feed is one in which the feed lines are curved and the direction of the feed varies from one point to another and is tangential to the lines of force at that point. So when we say something is tangential, let's say for example, a circle and a line. It simply means that that straight line simply just touches the circle without cutting into the circle, as you can see in the diagram on the screen, okay? So the direction of the feed at points A, B, C is given by the tangents to the curve at those point. So let's talk about electric line of force. So what do we mean by electric line of force? So electric line of force is the part which an isolated small positive charge would follow if placed in the feed. So this electric line of force is an imaginary line that is drawn in an electric feed such that the direction at any point gives the direction of the electric feed at that point. Let's move to the next slide. So on the next slide here, we are simply going to be describing the patterns of electric feed, maybe around an isolated positive charge or around an isolated negative charge and others. Okay, so the first one here is the pattern of electric feed around an isolated positive charge, as you can see in the diagram. So from here, you can see that the charge actually emanates, okay, from the isolated positive charge. Why uh, the diagram B here represents the pattern of electric field around isolated negative charge. So you can see that the charges actually terminate or end okay, around the isolated negative charge. Okay? Then C, we also have pattern of electric field around two positive charges. So as you can see here, the two positive charges are actually repairing each other. Okay, while we also have around two negative charges. So we also encounter the same thing. The two charges will repair each other. From the diagram, you can see that, that the charges are going into, okay, are going into the negative charges. While for the positive one, you can see that the 
um, the charges are leaving okay meaning that this is where the charges actually emanate okay the charges emanate around the positive charge why it terminates around the negative charge okay so let's move to the next slide to see more patterns okay so we also have uh, patterns of electric uh, feed around two equal opposite charges okay as you can see in the diagram and lastly we also have uh, electric pattern or patterns okay between a pair of parallel conducting plates okay so these are the two parallel conducting plates one plates one is positive and one is negative so as you can see the charges are actually moving from the positive to the negative plate okay so let's move to the next slide so on the next slide here we are simply going to be discussing the properties of feed lines okay so the properties of feed of electric lines of force can be summarized as follow one lines of force are imaginary okay they are not actually real. they are just figment of imagination so lines of force are imaginary or you can say electric lines of force are imaginary then two lines of force begin only on positive charges like i've said earlier they begin on positive charges and end only on negative charges okay now the number of feed lines starting or ending is proportional to the magnitude of the charge okay then three they repair each other sideways that is they do not cross each other okay uh, electric lines of force do not cross each other but rather they repair each other sideways okay so um if they do cross okay it means that the field would point in different direction at the same point which does not make sense okay so they do not cross each other if they do then the feed would point in different direction at the same point which does not make sense okay why number four lines of force in the uniform feed are straight parallel and evenly spaced okay which we have seen earlier okay why five lines of force indicate the direction of the electric feed lines of force indicates the direction of electric feed the direction of the feed at any point is given by the direction of the tangent to the feed at that point i think we did mention this when we are talking about uh, the types of feed okay when we discuss about variable feed why number six lines of force are continuous in any region with free charges lines of force are continuous in any region with free charges let's move to the next slide to see the last characteristic which is the seventh one okay so seven the lines are such that the electric field in a given region is proportional to the number of lines crossing that region that is the closer the lines are together the stronger the electric field at that region so let's talk about electric charges okay so the study of electric charges is about charges at rest and charges at rest is what is known as static electricity or electrostatics okay so static electricity is the type of electricity that does not move from one point to another in the substance in which it is produced okay an electric charge is the result of the gain or loss of electrons okay so according to atomic theory of course you must have come across this in chemistry okay i'm just going through this just to refresh our mind so according to the atomic theory matter is made up of molecules and molecules are made up of atoms right now the atom itself is made up of protons neutrons and electrons now the protons and the neutrons are contained in the neutral part of the atom called the nucleus in orbits the proton is a positively charged particle and cannot be easily transferred because it is relatively heavy. The neutron has no charge and thus it is electrically neutral. Okay, meaning that it doesn't have any charge. It's, no, it's neither positive nor negatively charged. Okay, the electron is a very light particle and it carries a negative charge. For an atom in its normal states, the number of, let's move to the next slide, the number of protons equals the number of electrons okay that is the number of protons that is positive charges equal the total number of electrons negative charges 
this makes the atom in this state to be electrically neutral because there is no net positive or negative charge. When the neutral atom gains electrons, then it becomes negatively charged because the net negative charge on it will be negative since it now has more negative charges than positive charges. On the other hand, when the neutral atom loses electrons, it becomes positively charged because it now has more positive charges than negative and the net charge on it is positive. Now let's talk about the types of charges. Okay, so there are uh, two types of charges, namely positive uh, charges and negative charges. So a positive charge can be produced by rubbing a glass rod with sick. Okay, while the negative charge can be produced by rubbing an ebonite rod with four. Okay, so the diagram below, okay, is a glass rod rub with sick. Okay, so the glass rod will become positively charged while the sink will become negatively charged. And the reason for that is because the glass rod has the tendency to lose electron. So it will lose electron to the sink. Okay, why the sink becomes negatively charged, why the glass rod itself will become positively charged. Let's move to the next slide. Okay, then the second type of charge which we have seen earlier, we said we have the negative charge. And we said the negative charge is produced when an ebonite rod is rubbed with four. Okay, so this is the diagram of an ebonite rod that is rubbed with four. Okay, so the ebonite rod will acquire negative charges from the four. Okay, why the ebonite rod becomes negatively charged, the four itself will become positively charged. Okay, then um, here we also have attraction and repulsion by charges. So when an ebonite rod rubbed with four is brought near a glass rod, rub with sick, they are attracted to each other. The reason is because the ebonite rod is negatively charged and the glass rod is positively charged. And remember that unlike charges attract, okay? So they are attracted to each other. That is, the ebonite rod will be attracted to the glass rod, okay? Why number two? When a glass rod rub with sick is brought near a glass rod rub with sick, they repair each other. Okay, the reason for um, the repulsion is because um, the charges are the same, positive, positive, right? Now, when an ebonite rod rubbed with a four is brought near an ebonite rod rubbed with a four, they repair each other, okay? Because both ebonite rod are negatively charged, so they will repair each other. So from the above, we can conclude that like or similar charges repair each other while unlike or opposite charges attract each other and this is the fundamental law of static electricity so if in an exam you are asked to state the fundamental law of static electricity just tell them that like charges or you can say like or similar charges repair each other why unlike charges or uh, opposite charges attract each other so that is just the law of uh, static electricity so let's move to the next slide. So on the next slide here, we are going to be talking about conductors and insulators, okay? So in static electricity, uh, substances are classified according to the ability to allow electrons to flow through them. Okay, so based on that, we have two of such groups, uh, namely conductors and insulators. So conductors are materials that allow electrons to pass through them easily. And the examples are almost all metals, okay? Almost all metals. Although all metals does allow electrons to pass through them, but at different rates, okay? There are some that allow metals to pass more through them than others, okay? So example of conductors that allows the electrons to pass through them easily are copper, sodium, potassium, etc. Now remember that sodium is a soft metal, okay? Not as strong as copper. Then damped air is also an example of a conductor, graphite, it's also an example of conductor, but graphite is a non-metal, an allotrope of carbon, okay? But it does allow electrons to pass through it easily. Then we have acid, like hydrochloric acid, like sulfuric acid, okay? Then we have salt solution, like sodium chloride solution, 
Okay, then we we'll have the earth and the human body. They are all examples of conductors. These materials allow the electron to pass through them easily. Then we we'll have another class of material which are referred to as insulators. So these materials do not allow electrons to pass through them easily. Examples are plastic, polythene, ebonite rod, paper, dry air, silk, oil, glass, sulfur, or we can say all non metals apart from graphite, okay, which is an allotrope of carbon, then wood, then uh, four is also there, they are all examples of insulators. Okay? So it can be seen that good conductors of heat are also good conductors of electricity. That is, those substances that allow heat to flow through them easily are also good conductors of electricity. That is, it also allows electron to flow through them or to pass through them easily. So a metal is uh, supported on an isolating materials okay, before charging it so that the charges produced will not flow to the earth. Now remember that we said earth is a conductor. Okay, so when you are charging a metal and it's just placed on the earth, then all the charges is going to flow out okay, from the metal into the earth. So for that reason, the metal being charged is really supported on an insulating material to prevent those charges okay, produced from flowing to the earth. Okay, so this is where we draw the curtain for the preview of today's video. But you can watch the complete video by simply clicking on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website. There you will have to subscribe in order to enjoy the complete video. So in the complete video of this uh, lesson, Electric Feed 1, you will learn about the different methods of producing charges. You will learn about the electroscope. Okay, you will also learn about electrophorus and lightning conductors and many more. We also have some work examples just to drive home the lesson. So I believe you enjoyed the preview of today's video. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.